This is the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, a great MacBook that does everything one may need it to do at a fraction of the price of what a MacBook with similar RAM and storage specs costs. That, while it may not seem like a particularly good deal with Apple Silicon being out for a few years now, might actually be one of the best value 15 to 16 inch MacBooks you can buy right now. And in this video, we're gonna do an updated review of this laptop, talk about longevity, and do some tests to see if it's worth buying in 2025. Now, if you're thinking about buying this laptop, you're in luck. Brand new, this originally costed $2,500, but now you can pick these up for only $500 to $700. I'll get why it depreciated a lot later in this video, but I think for a 15 to 16 inch used MacBook, for around that price, you're getting a really good deal. If you look at the prices for used 2019, 2018, and 2017 MacBook Pros, they're all kind of around the same price range that this is at. So if you can try to pick up one of these 2019 six inch MacBook Pros, uh, that way you're getting a good deal if you can find one. And then when it comes to the newer six inch MacBook Pros, Apple updated their design, they updated their processors and made quite a few changes. So if you're wondering why the price of this is really different compared to use M1 16 inch MacBook Pros, that is why. I will note if you are trying to find one of these, they aren't as common as used iPhones or other Apple products out there. I would highly recommend though, checking your local used market first, because that's typically where you're gonna find the best deal. And if you do decide to do that, I'd highly recommend as well, checking out my used MacBook testing guide. That way you know everything you need to check before buying. One of the things that really impressed me about the 2019 six inch MacBook Pro, when I first saw people like I just didn't review it, is how nice the display is on this thing. It added 0.6 inches from the previous MacBook Pro's display, which to me is absolutely ginormous. And I compare this to my M1 MacBook Air that I use daily for classes, and there's quite a big difference. But for some people, this is probably what they like because they like a bigger display to do a lot of work on. But for those who don't like it, you can find 13 inch 2019 MacBook Pro models that might be a better fit for you. As for the tech specs of these displays, you are getting a good 500 nits of max brightness and P3 white color gamut, which makes this a really good laptop for those who are doing color grading and want accurate colors. And then it also has an anti-reflective coating. However, it can get marks from the keyboard area and overheating after a few years of use. And then of course too, this laptop does have a 720p front facing webcam, which may not be the best, but still good enough to take a selfie with. And then of course, this wouldn't be a MacBook review without talking about the keyboard area. The 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro has a really special place in my heart. I know you're looking at me like, what do you mean? And what I mean is the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro is one of the first MacBooks to switch from Apple's unreliable butterfly keyboard to finally a scissor switch or regular mechanical keyboard that is a lot more reliable. So with this, it doesn't feel like you're typing on a brick. There's no double clicking and the keys typically don't get sticky. However, this one, the previous owner spilled pop on it, so it's kind of an exception, but you get the idea. And then one thing that's also kind of nice about the 2019 six inch MacBook Pro is it's one of the last MacBooks to have this exclusive feature called the touch bar, which is essentially a little display that offers more customization and functionality compared to a typical row of function keys. And then you have some other design features too, like the touch ID reader, and then two USB-C ports on either side for a total of four and a headphone jack. Moving over to the trackpad, you have this really big glass trackpad, which is super responsive by the way. And my dad, when he switched from a Windows laptop to a MacBook, this was like one of the first things he noticed and appreciated about it was how much more responsive the trackpad was compared to a Windows laptop. So that's gonna be something for those who this is your first MacBook, you're gonna really like. And yes, with the 2019 six inch MacBook Pro, you are getting one of the best in terms of build quality. I don't know how many 15 to 16 inch laptops out there have an aluminum build with this nice of a display, this nice of a trackpad, and this nice of a keyboard area. And then one thing that may not potentially be as nice for some people is performance. I really hope the battery life on this laptop would be pretty good considering its size, but after playing a video for four hours straight on medium brightness, it looked like it could get only a comfortable four to five hours of straight YouTube video playback. So I wanted to do a real world test for myself. So I brought with me to class one day. I only had classes in the morning and then I used it for a bit in the afternoon. And looking at the rate it drained, I think you can comfortably get about eight hours of web-based work on this laptop. 
but with more heavier apps, it's going to be a lot less. Battery life may not be this thing's strong suit, however, it is better than a lot of laptops out there, especially for around this price. And you can kind of get around it too with an external battery bank. And then for those who are curious, the battery health of this laptop is at 86%. So those are some things to maybe think about in terms of battery life before buying this laptop. And then where this laptop does well performance wise is with everything else. The configuration I have here is a 2.6 gigahertz, six core i7 with four gigabytes of AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphics and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then this can be configured up to a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core i9 with eight gigabytes of AMD Radeon Pro 5600M graphics, 64 gigabytes of RAM and an eight terabyte SSD. And I'm gonna tell you this laptop runs Minecraft extremely well. I can get comfortable 90 to 100 frames per second all day long on default settings, even in caves. But in all seriousness, this laptop is really good performance wise. For office use, you can expect around eight hours of battery life with a second or less web page load speeds and support for applications like Microsoft Office for another three to four years. For video editing, I'd expect about four hours of battery life I tried doing some 4K 60 frames per second video editing on this laptop and it handled it pretty well with one small leg spike after a few minutes of use, which I think is normal. And I did notice video playback would be slightly jittery at times when files weren't completely rendered. Uh, 1080p video editing was buttery smooth and performance wise, I don't think video editing is really a concern for this laptop. My main concern with video editing though is storage. Yes, the 2019 16 inch Macro Pro has a base storage of 512 gigabytes. However, I think people are gonna fill it up pretty quickly, especially if they're editing a lot of files. So it might be a smart idea to put your video edits on an external hard drive. And then for software support, you can expect one to two years with Final Cut Pro and about three to four years with Adobe Premiere. And then for those who are photo editors, this laptop is really good for its P3 white color name display. And you can expect about three to four years of software support for Adobe Photoshop. As for using Adobe Photoshop, I noticed that photo editing ran really smoothly with very little slowdowns. However, I wasn't really pushing it too hard. I was just masking objects and making some color adjustments. And for other things like music production and coding, I'm gonna be honest here, I haven't had a chance to learn, nor do I have the time to go out and learn how to do these things to test it. But I would assume though, that this laptop is gonna be more than capable for what you're planning on using it for. I used to sell 2017 MacBook Pros with eight gigabytes of RAM and even 2019 MacBook Pros a year ago to people who are DJs or working in the music production industry. So I think you're gonna be good there, but you may wanna look it up. And then one thing you can do and one thing you should do is search up the minimum and recommended requirements for your software. You can do this by searching up your software and then system requirements or by going to your app's download page. And typically it'll tell you the minimum or recommended requirements for that software, which can be very handy and save you a lot of hassle later on down the line potentially. And then one thing that's probably one of the best reasons to buy this laptop is this is the most powerful MacBook that can run Windows. Yes, this MacBook can run Windows. This can be very nice for accessing Windows exclusive apps like I don't know, Fortnite, for example. And it's kind of sad to see that the Apple Silicon Macs that came out after this do not support Windows, but that is really nice about this laptop is for those who want to run Windows on the Mac, this is your last chance. I kind of covered this earlier with different softwares, but for major Mac OS updates, Mac OS Ventura, Sonoma, Sequoia, I would say there's about a 50-50% chance this will get the next major Mac OS update. But don't worry though, because this laptop is still gonna get three years of app support updates after that, three years of security updates, and I'd expect about the same support with App Store updates and other professional programs. And then for things like Microsoft Office, Adobe suite of apps, and QuickBooks, I would expect about four to five years of app support updates for those. And then for Google Chrome, Minecraft, those types of applications, I would expect honestly seven plus years down the line. You can also increase the longevity of this laptop by using this application called Open Core Legacy Patcher, which when the time comes, will allow you to install newer versions of Mac OS onto this laptop. There's this guy out there, Anson Alexander, that makes videos talking about how to do it and covering the different updates and stuff. So I'd highly recommend subscribing to his channel. Uh, that way when the time comes, you know exactly what you need to do.
And then we also have to talk about repairs. And this is something you probably don't wanna think about now, but with these used MacBooks, when you wreck them, it's pretty much considered totaled or more than what the laptop is worth in order to fix them. Screen replacements are easily over $600. Keyboard repairs typically require you to disassemble the whole laptop in order to fix it. So I'd expect around that ballpark. Uh, some minor repairs can kind of be around hundred bucks. And then even other things too, like storage. The storage is soldered onto this, making data recovery extremely difficult, if not impossible. And battery replacements are $250 from Apple. However, you can get it replaced by a third party for a lot cheaper for around $160, $180. These are some things you may want to keep in mind as you're thinking about buying one of these. And it might be smart to kind of mitigate your risk by going with a base model 2019 to 60 inch MacBook Pro. So now it's time to answer the burning question you guys have. Should you buy the 2019 six inch MacBook Pro in 2025? Well, I would say for most people who are starting out in their professional career or who are mainly using this for work tasks, yes, it is gonna get the job done. However, I will say though, there is better MacBooks out there for a few hundred dollars more that might be worth the investment. Take the M2 15 inch MacBook Air for instance. It has a 35% increase in battery life a newer design and is much more efficient in terms of power and processing speeds. For its downsides though, it costs $650 for a used model. It has a 0.7 inch smaller display, and then it has a base storage of 256 gigabytes and eight gigabytes of RAM. But I will say though, for those who are just using it for work, for photo editing, and even some light video editing, that laptop is gonna be a really good buy for you. Anyways, that concludes this review of the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'm also gonna put a playlist up on screen of more MacBook reviews if you wanna check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.